Samsung Galaxy A54 is Samsung's 2023 mid-ranger phone, comes in at 449, 450, and the S23 Ultra often seeing discounts to around 999, retails for right around that $1,300 price range. So it's up there, twice the price or even more than the A54. But let's go ahead and see what a mid-ranger Samsung performs like versus a Samsung premium top tier device in 2023. All right, so let's go ahead and kick this video off with a boot up test with both phones in three, two, go, and see which one can get to the home screen first. Now you should actually be doing a reboot once in a while to clear the cache and memory of your phone. It will actually make it perform a little bit better, especially on Samsung phones, which tend to have a pretty intensive system with the One UI combined with Android itself. Um, but there's also a feature within the battery settings will allow you to auto restart without you having to do it yourself. And so the Galaxy S23 Ultra turns on far faster than that of the A54. And one thing I noticed, I've been doing some preliminary testing, is that the A54 actually takes some time to go ahead and get booted up into the system. And just kind of, it just kind of feels a little laggy. Look at this. Like when you first turn it on, it definitely takes a lot of time. Most people won't really notice this because again, they're not going to be rebooting their phones all the time, but still, you know, it's just, it's kind of really slow when it first turns on. So if you ever do have to, you're being a little impatient. And by the way, there is a June patch for this phone. That's why this just popped up. But I'm not putting the June patch yet on this phone because the June patch has not arrived to my twice the price S23 Ultra. I don't know what's up with that, but I want it to be fair. So these are gonna be the May updates and I'll do the uh, June patch when the June patch arrives for the S23 Ultra. But speaking of the fingerprint sensors, now the fingerprint sensors are in different locations. The S23 Ultra is definitely in a better spot, I would say, and it's faster looking. Um, they're not crazy different in the speed, but I find the accuracy to be a little bit better for the S23 Ultra and a little bit faster. It's just in a better spot and the fingerprint sensor itself is a little better. It also sets up faster when you are doing the setup and things of that sort. Now, when it comes to the general operating system, so both are running the One UI 5.1 and scrolling through on the surface, the Galaxy A54 with its 120 Hertz panel is actually quite nice. So if I go to display here, you'll see adaptive refresh. It's 120 Hertz, but there's is a catch here. This phone actually needs the 120 Hertz because without it, it would be absolutely terrible. I'm just being straight up with you because on the standard mode, you know, the phone already itself is not super fast. It just, it's just not great in the standard mode. Um, but with the A54, it's kind of a trickster phone because a lot of times I'll just generally be scrolling through, everything will be going smooth and I'm super happy with it. I'm, I'm raving about it in my initial reviews. And then when I'm using this phone, I'll just be doing something and just something gets laggy. Like, like right there, like you see like that slowness, a little slow animation. And again, you know, I am picking on it a little bit. It is a 449 to $500 phone. But after trying out some of these competitors like the Poco F5 Pro, F5, I mean, these phones are getting Snapdragon premium processors. That phone just feels like it's overpriced for what it is. Even the Pixel 7a, I know you're getting the whole one UI experience, the multitasking, but when you don't have the power to make it a smooth experience, I tend to really notice the performance. Now with the Galaxy S23 Ultra, this is the complete opposite of the A54. This phone is so good that it makes me forget that Samsung ever even had lag issues in the past. This phone has been ridiculously fast. It's faster than the latest iPhone out right now. It's probably the fastest phone I've tested all year. The Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra and the most consistent. It really doesn't have any major issues. Now, some people actually have already got their June update and are saying that it's kind of messed with their battery life on this phone. But overall, it's been butter on the S23 Ultra. I just wish Samsung would give it the A series line a little bit better performance on the next time around. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the app performance. Now on both of these phones, everything is closed out. Again, we are looking at a much slower processor here on the left versus Snapdragon on the right. Let's begin with Calendar. Exynos on the left, 
and faster on S23 Ultra. About the same on calculator, clock, world clock, stopwatch. And don't get me wrong, the A54 is a usable phone. Of course, they're not gonna sell you a phone you can't use. But there is enough stutters and animation delays and slowdowns that it definitely is noticeable. And the sad part about that is that what'll happen is a person will buy an A series line phone They'll think, and then they'll start to, to view the Samsung brand as a laggy phone if they're having some animation stutter or something like that, which the A54 has exhibited a lot for me or a few crash apps. Then they'll just think, oh, you know what? I'm just gonna get an iPhone and call it a day. Then they'll go and get an iPhone. The iPhones are all smooth. And then they'll basically just write off Samsung as they don't know how to make fast phones or they're a laggy mess. When really you just didn't use a Samsung phone with a premier processor. But I think for the general folks out there, the A54 is still gonna be plenty good enough. So, so far pretty good. Categories, pretty good on both. So let's head up out of here and we'll go into Amazon shopping. Faster on the right and Starbucks. And if you look when I'm scrolling out, faster on the right, the A54 has an animation chop. It just looks a stuttery when it comes out. And you can see much faster on the Galaxy. Now, this might seem like, oh, well, Nick, bro, that's twice the price. Some people can't, yeah, I get it. But at the same time, you can get a Pixel 7a that doesn't perform, that performs a little better. And also, you know, if you want, you could just save up and get an S23, which is only like a couple hundred dollars more, which performs exactly like the S23 Plus. And Premium phones have actually been leading the market in sales lately. There's a reason why. They don't have to deal with any stutters, delays, bad cameras. A54 doesn't have bad cameras, by the way. They're pretty darn good. But the S23 Ultra much faster to turn on asphalt, so gaming will be quicker as well. It's not like I'm surprised here, but I just wanted to show you what you're sacrificing if you do get a mid-ranger Samsung versus a premier Samsung here. And the thing about this is that with the Galaxy A54, what you're looking at is over $500 with taxes, depending on where you're at. It could be a little less depending on where you're at, but it's a near $500 phone. And it performs to me like a $299 phone, or maybe like a $350 phone, to be honest. Let's go into Tempo Run 2. It kind of just reminds me of the past Samsung. Well, we were on a different update here. A little unprepared on my part, but probably won't make a major difference here in the Temple Run. Let's go into Subway Surfers. We can just write Temple Run off if you want. It's still going to be faster on a Samsung, but you'll see right here, quicker here. And I still think there's a great person to buy the A54. You probably are thinking, I hate this phone. I do not hate the A54. I actually really like it. I think it's awesome that you get all the Samsung features. And if you do a trade-in, you could definitely get that phone for $200. You get all the Samsung stuff and you can run it. You just have to have a little patience with that phone. But I don't think patience is something a lot of people have in the year 2023, if I'm being totally honest with you. Let me go into Geekbench 6. You could see on the right, it's at about there. 3D Mark, and why do I say that? I mean, look at all the computer companies, look at all the phone companies. All they do is market how fast their latest and greatest is. Why do you think that is? Because people are desiring a faster device. Of course, they want other stuff too, like now they're wanting a lot more battery life, but overall, the A54 did pretty good by comparison in this speed test, but just a little stuttering, a little bit behind the Premier phone right here. So let's go ahead and take a look at the RAM management. now. A54 has eight gigs RAM. Actually, my version has six gigs. This one has 12 gigs. I think there is an A54 with eight, but mine has six. Let's see how it does, Temple Run 2. So reloading there, Call of Duty. Ooh, it had Call of Duty open, pretty good. Asphalt 9. Getting a full reload on the A54. Dead Trigger 2, full reload on the left. And it's looking like we're gonna get reloads well, not that one for the A54. Oh, did you see that animation on the left? Oh man, 
A fifty four. When you start when you start running a lot of application, it definitely slows down. We're going to Twitter. See, that's why I love the S twenty three Ultra, and I love the S twenty three Plus and the S twenty three, because Samsung's system is heavy. It has a lot of stuff going on, and it requires the power to push it. It's kind of like a you know a truck, you know, a big old truck. Well, I think of it like that, you know, you need a big engine to drive that truck. Well, the Samsung is like a truck. It's got so many, a truckload of features, but you need a big engine, aka the CPU, to drive that efficiently. And that's what the S23 series has. But the A54 is putting a weaker engine in there. And then what you're getting is just a little bit less of a joyous experience. Again, some people will be able to overlook that. But for me, mostly I could overlook it, but... Now that I know in the back of my brain that there are flags, there are options out there in the same price category with more premium chips, it's hard to overlook that. Now, we all know you get a much better camera system on the premium phone, but at the same time, the A54 offers a nice set of cameras for the price. Let's go ahead and hit the camera. And not bad on the opening as well for the A54. It wasn't faster, but it wasn't bad either. Let's go ahead and hit the camera. Yeah. I'm pretty happy with that performance on the A54. Shutter speed quite similar. You do have a ton of modes here, even though you're using a less premium phone. Of course, you're gonna get more on the Samsung S23 Ultra, but you do have a lot up there for the A54. So I'm pretty impressed with the speed of opening the camera. How about the double click? That's also pretty good. So this could be a good camera phone for you for sure on the A54. We already know the S23 Ultra is a beast in the camera. I'm just you know, this video is a little bit more geared towards talking about A54. Let's go into Geekbench 6 and let's go ahead and run the CPU benchmark 3, 2, go. And I'll be back when they are done. And so the final Geekbench 6 scores are in and you can see on the single core, quite a bit more on the S23 Ultra, almost a thousand points better. And on that multi-core score, almost two times better. So just what you would expect. I mean, the price is an indicative of the result there. Let's go ahead and run a 3D Mark test, and I'll be back when this test is done. And substantially better in the Wildlife Extreme as you would expect as well, but by how much? More than three times better. So while the price is only about two to two and a half times better, the performance is about three times better. But again, if you find the S23 Ultra on a discount for 999, it's actually only two times more. And if you trade in a phone, it could be closer to a $700 price range or even less if you have a good trade-in. So yeah, that's gonna wrap it up here between A54 and the Galaxy S23 Ultra. Conclusion, Samsung really does great with their premium phones, but their mid-rangers definitely don't feel as, as fast as some other mid-rangers out there. So I personally would go with the more premium Samsung phone if you are looking to get into the Samsung world. But if you really like it and you like their software, you like their ecosystem, and you just wanna pay a little bit less, the A54 is a good option. Definitely more intriguing than like an iPhone SE because it has triple cameras, large screen, OLED panel, 120 hertz. It seems great on paper. Um, just the performance sometimes is lacking. But other than that, it's a great little device in the A54. Uh, but the S23 Ultra, is just a beast. It's the king. Uh, thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts. Comment down below. Nick here. Catch you in the next one. Peace.